Welcome to Presidential Fight Club, the show that answers the question, if all 44 presidents fought each other one-on-one, who would win? Hosted by two history professors who have too much time on their hands, Scott Rank and James Early. Welcome, everyone, to round two of the Midwestern Regional of Presidential Fight Club. Entering the tournament is among the most fabled of all presidents. as Abraham Lincoln, and he is going against a winner in round one, Grover Cleveland. James, tell us about Lincoln. All right, Abraham Lincoln. What what is what can I add to his legend, to his fame? What can I say about Lincoln? Well, most of us know that Lincoln uh, was raised in dire poverty. Uh, and he, his um, father was pretty tough on him. They did not have a close relationship. His father worked him all the time and worked him like a slave, which is some people believe that may be part of why, at least, that uh, Lincoln was so opposed to slavery. His mother died when he was very young. Uh, his father remarried, and the new mother was very, uh, very kind to Lincoln and encouraged him to read and to pursue the things. Lincoln did not like manual labor at all, and he tried to get out of it as much as he could. But unfortunately for him as a young man, that was not very often. <laughs> he was always doing manual labor, and he was famous for his great physical strength. He, he later was known as the rail splitter because he split probably literally thousands, if not millions of rails uh, to make fences and other things. He was always chopping wood, uh, doing farm chores and things like that. So he was strong as an ox and he became famous as a young man for his great strength. He moved to a town called New Salem, Illinois, when he was a young man, which I recently got to visit. That was really neat. And there's a story. There's a story about this local gang that, uh, a gang of guys, you know, just young, tough guys that wanted to kind of make everybody know they were the, running the place and they were really tough at least. Uh, and they challenged him to wrestle all of them, not at the same time, but one by one. And the story is that Lincoln beat every single one of them. And after that, they really knew now who was the toughest guy in town. And, and uh, they became friends after that. So Lincoln gained fame as a really, really good wrestler. He was six foot four by the time he reached adulthood, which was just, I mean, today that's very, very tall. But back then it was freakishly tall. He had super long arms. He had super long legs. As I mentioned before, he, he was just extremely strong. There's another story about when he was running for office, he ran for uh, the Illinois uh, re- legislature and he was giving a speech and somebody was heckling him and he went out into the crowd and picked up the guy by <laughs> the seat of his pants and by the back of his neck and threw him. And the, the story says 12 feet. That's a little hard to believe, <laughs> but even if it's four feet, that's <laughs> incredibly impressive. So you don't mess with Lincoln. Uh, Lincoln was had a great fighting spirit when he was a, an attorney. He went for the jugular and he won. Uh, he became famous as a really, really good attorney. Uh, He was tough in his debates. And, of course, we all know uh, his service in the Civil War, how he uh, he was not going to let the Union fall apart. So Lincoln, yeah, one of our absolute toughest presidents, both in body and in spirit. Well, there you have it. A frontier wrestling champion, pterodactyl of a man who can do a shot put with somebody who heckles him. So (laughs) that's right. So what do I bring to the fight? Well, I bring a returning champion, Grover Cleveland, Cleveland, not as tall, 5'11", big guy, 260, depending on what time period you're looking at. Lincoln was in the Civil War. Um, Cleveland was not, as James mentioned in the last fight, he could have served in the single war, but instead he paid someone $150 to take his place to avoid the draft during the Conscription Act of 1863. So Cleveland, what does he bring to a fight? Well, number one, he was a tremendously hard worker. He'd work up to three or four in the morning, several nights a week. And one thing that there's a quote that was attributed to him, it's probably not true. It's probably apocryphal because They say that he stated this, which was nine, which doesn't sound like a nine-year-old, but it's, if we expect to become great and good men and be respected and esteemed by our friend, we must improve our time when we are young. So whether that's true or not, it shows that he had a very committed psychology and determined to win. Uh, James also mentioned that um, 
he when he was a sheriff of Erie County, New York, he was against the death penalty, but he wanted to show that he would uphold the law regardless of whether he agreed with it or not. So he personally executed a man, even though he didn't need to. Um, another thing in terms of having a incorruptible spirit is that he portrayed himself as incorruptible in the age of party bosses and party machines and rampant corruption, which is fair because a lot of people think that the presidential election was stolen from him by Benjamin Harrison because the party bosses of New York stole the electoral votes. But Mark Twain noted that he thought Cleveland's character was on par with Washington. In terms of his strength, there aren't really great stories like you have with Lincoln. There is one story that um, it was said he could rip fence posts out of the ground with his bare hands, uh, but we don't have any stories like that about actually fighting someone or getting into multiple rounds of frontier wrestling. Yeah, Lincoln's uh, tougher than a fence post. Yeah, the fence post <laughs> doesn't move, so that's something that's you right. got to keep in mind. Um, he was a hunter, but he, was, he wasn't into any sort of exercise. He called bodily movement alone as among the dreary and unsatisfying things of life, yeah. which, which isn't a quote you're going to hear from someone who's a fight champion. So as you can tell, I'm really not bringing a lot of enthusiasm to Cleveland side, but well, there you go. So I'm kind of like the uh, court appointed attorney to a guy who really obviously hit the liquor store with his truck and there's not much you can do to rescue him, but <laughs> James, who is the winner in this fight? Well, surprise, surprise. What a shocker. Lincoln actually oh. triumphed handily. I think Cleveland might have gotten one sympathy vote, but it's Lincoln in one round by knockout. Knockout. Wow. Is that the first one? Almost unanimous? Uh, yes. Actually, no. I think we had a couple in the uh, Northeast, if I remember correctly, with Theodore Roosevelt fighting. Oh, right. Yeah. So... We'll see what happens if those two crowds pass in the future. But Lincoln, it is. Well, Lincoln advances without much of a problem. We're going to have two returning champions from uh, our first round in the next fight, and that is McKinley. Oh, I'm sorry, not returning. We have a new Harrison entering the next fight. Benjamin Harrison was knocked out. To avenge him is his grandfather, William Henry Harrison versus McKinley. Thanks for listening to Presidential Fight Club. If you'd like to download your own printable bracket sheets for each regional tournament so you can guess how the tournament will go, check out presidentialfightclub.com. We'd appreciate it if you could rate and review us on Apple Podcasts as well. Thanks for listening, and may you fight with the stamina of Teddy Roosevelt, the courage of George Washington, and the reach of Abraham Lincoln.